Thanks, Mr. Cox. Thank, thank you, you, Chair. Senator, uh, Senator Gallagher. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Secretary, we know from a um, question on notice one, two, three from the previous supplementary estimates that 2.7 million was spent to renovate the ambassador's villa in Rome. A million of the 2.7 million went to hiring a temporary residency for the ambassador for the duration of the renovation, while only 1.7 went towards the renovation. And we also know that in 2010, uh, some renovations had been completed when uh, Ambassador Vanstone was uh, was there. So, are you able to confirm, Secretary, that it cost the department a million dollars of taxpayers' money to temporarily house the Ambassador for two years and four months? Is that the correct interpretation of that answer? Um, I'll ask... Uh Mr. Nixon, if he that could never come across your desk either, Secretary. It's beneath your uh, authority level or something, is it? Uh, Kevin Nixon, uh, Executive Director of the Overseas Property Office. Um, Senator, the period of uh, temporary accommodation was uh, from July 2012 through to December 2014. So I think it was uh, for a period that actually exceeded the uh, works period at the owned residence, um, because the original uh, rationale for vacating the property uh, was related to um, concerns about uh, the residence and stability uh, of that uh, site. Well, what I'm after is, do we spend a million bucks to house the ambassador elsewhere while we did renovation? That's the first point. Uh, were we uh, having to spend $35,000 a month to house the ambassador in a row? Is that what it costs to house the, you know, the ambassador in Rome? $35,000 per month. Well, Senator, we've uh, provided the uh, uh, answer there that uh, indicates that uh, uh, one million of the two point, uh, sorry, uh, confirming what the uh, the costs of that uh, that were. So it's a yes. Uh, that's correct. How do we, how do we, um, and I appreciate that uh, an ambassador's place must be of a suitable standard, but how do you check the market? I mean, $35,000 a month. We're talking about, as I said to the Secretary earlier, out of the $405 billion that's collected this year, $194 billion will come from PAYE tax earners. They don't believe these sorts of figures. When I uh, have a conversation with an ordinary taxpayer and you actually articulate that we spend $35,000 a month to house an ambassador while we're fixing the house up, they can't comprehend these figures. So, you know, can you give any justification as to why we spend such large sums of money and what do we spend them on? Well, Senator, I think there's a couple of points. The first is that, um, again, um, you know, the obvious is that we're dealing in uh, uh, overseas environments and therefore um, we're leasing uh, properties uh, at uh, overseas uh, currencies. Um, so there's always an element of forex exposure within that. Um, the second point is that um, we don't actually uh, uh, take these properties for uh, the indulgence of the uh, head of mission. They're um, a representational asset. Um, they're utilised to advance Australia's interests. Um, and so these properties are uh, really an extension of that work environment. And um, how do you, do, do you go through a tender or a quotation process or is it left to, uh, to you to do the job, so to speak, and then goes back into defect and someone says, oh, well, that's fair enough, we'll just sign off on that, that looks fair. Is there three quotes? Is there a tender process? Is there a, an assessment of uh, what's on the market or do we just get, well, we need to stay somewhere. This so, Senator, the normal process would be that Post would uh, undertake uh, a property market search, identify what options are available, um, go through a process of uh, you know, uh, checking their suitability against various uh, considerations and then uh, seek uh, to put forward a, a recommendation. Okay. Uh, does the um, um, does this expenditure so 
So, so this is this is my difficulty. Two point seven um, uh, spent on renovating the ambassador's villa, but what we find is that only one point seven was on the renovation. The other million was to put the ambassador somewhere else. I mean, well, Senator, it wasn't possible to do the works with uh, the property remaining occupied. Uh, and in the event that it was possible for the uh, person to occupy it, its uh, representational uh, element would have been you know, severely limited. Um, so the decision was that the property was best vacated uh, to allow the works to be done. Yeah. And look, you know, I, I, I must accept your judgment on that, but when you read through the renovation of the villa, I mean, clearly there would be stuff which um, replacement of carpets and curtains. I mean, every household does that every now and again. I mean, you don't have to pay 35 grand's worth of rent to move out while you do stuff like that. Senator, so some, of those, some, some of those things were uh, uh, replaced or the works were taken because it was opportune to do those whilst the uh, property was vacant, as opposed to not do them and then uh, impose disruption or uh, another element of uh, inability to use the residence for its representational purposes at a later point. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, it's, the money has been expended. Um, I'm sure the Secretary is going to say it's in accordance with all of their uh, delegation protocol and prudent sort of expenditure. But it looks, pro, you know, it looks extravagant. And for the average taxpayer who I listen to, they're not appreciative of the way we spend money in a lot of cases. And these examples just cause uh, more and more a disdain and scrutiny of public expenditure. And to me, $35,000 per month, uh, I think we could have done a better job. Over to you, uh, Secretary, if you want to destroy my argument. Well, Senator, it, it is a lot of money, and 35000 <laughs> is uh, a high rental to pay, but um, you have to look at uh, the context in which this is being done. Um, Operating an overseas network is, is not cheap, and in some countries it is very expensive. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't go out and look for the most expensive and, and extravagant building that we can find. <laughs> I've got to dispute that for, in Doha. Well, well I've got to Senator, dispute we, that we, in Doha. We, we do not. I mean, we are talking about a building which is a working asset for the Australian government. In other words, a residence that can be used for representational purposes and for all things that an ambassador needs to do to advance our national interests in the country mm. to which he or she is accredited, in this case, in, in Italy. Uh, that requires a certain type of building. It requires a building with uh, space to conduct representational functions. It requires the building to be in a location uh, which makes sense from the point of view of inviting senior Italian government or business figures to come. I mean, if you were 60 miles out, uh, you probably wouldn't have too many guests. So when you add up all of these requirements, your professional requirements for uh, a, uh, a facility which enables you to do that, a location that makes sense and which contributes to it, a high cost location like Rome, um, it comes to this amount of money. I, I fully accept that to the average person on the street, that is a lot of money. But I think if you work your way through how you get to that point, uh, there is a process behind it and there is a logic behind it uh, and there is a serious and a defensible objective behind it. Thank you. Do you want to take the last one, Anne? Uh, yes. 